Welcome to Ocean Stories, a podcast hosted by me, Lydia Carey, and me, Sarah Hersping. We may not be marine experts or even professional scuba divers, but we are curious about the ocean and ways to protect it. Every week, we chat with conservationists, researchers, business owners, and anyone else with an ocean story to tell. So whether you're a scientist or someone who's simply curious about the big blue, you're in the right spot. We can't save the seas alone, but we can do it together. Hello! Welcome back to Ocean Stories! What's new with you? We recently got the feedback that some of you guys love hearing us just ramble ramble around and up and down. So here you go. But stay tuned because in this episode we have a little shark facts trivia fun fact part. Um, I will ask Lydia a bunch of questions and you guys can see if you know the answers maybe. Whoa, I need to move. I literally look like I'm not wearing pants, but I'm very much wearing <laughs> pants. It looks a little bit like you're naked, but I love it. <laughs> it's a I frisky have show today. Bike shorts. So what's new with you? Well, I learned how to check the oil on a car. Sorry that I didn't Slowly. know how to do that before. All you haters out there, but I just never did it before. I just I had my my Trust last car into like, your car. I never needed to know how to do it with my last car. Um, so I finally learned how to do it, and I found that there was absolutely no oil. So take this as a reminder to next time you get in your car, if you have an older car, to check the oil. That's what's new with me. What else is new with me? Well, I don't we know. tried to. Um, we had a little bit of an eye-opening situation this weekend when we tried to hold our breath for longer than 20 seconds. Um, we oh did my God, a little. That's true pool dive competition um trying to figure out if we will ever be able to be free diving or holding our breath it was bad um well actually i feel like we'll be able to improve it was funny we'll maybe post a video about it because we filmed it and it is really hilarious actually it's super confusing for me because i feel physically healthy especially my lungs so it's weird that I am unable to hold my breath, but I was the worst of the three of us. And I was even practicing yesterday in the car, just trying to hold my breath for as long as I could. And I just find it really difficult, but I think it's because I think I'm it's not like, pus- pushing past that moment yeah. when you need I to breathe. I think it's like mostly technique and mental and not so much your lung capacity, unless like I think if you like, I mean, who know? I don't know what I'm talking about, but I feel like if you're like an active, sporty young person, your lung capacity is most likely okay. It's more like the mental. So if anyone has free diving tips, let us know. I had 10 years of singing class and I think I learned like a lot of breathing techniques and I think you learn how to use your breath and therefore hold your breath because you have to get through like long but I also did like a lot of I don't know the last summers whenever we're in a pool my friends and I were obsessed with who can dive the longest and as you know I'm extremely competitive so I will push past everything to win that challenge and that probably helped too <laughs> well I'm gonna be most improved in the breath holding department so watch yeah. out see what else is new I don't even know. Oh, yeah, I started skating recently, about three days ago. Very humbling experience, um, but hopefully I'll get better very soon. Um, I think you're pretty good. I feel like you're too hard on yourself. Better than me. Sarah was, like, holding my hands. The pictures are actually so cute. She was, like, holding my hands and guiding me and teaching me how to skate because I'm truly a novice. Like, I'm truly at zero. At least you can, like, ride around, you know? Yeah, but I feel like from, like, a board sport perspective... Maybe I'm hard on myself, but I definitely suck like really badly at it. And and I'm I'm trying to skate a carver. And I'm like, who? This is this is how I carve on a carver, and I'm pretending to turn into waves, and I can't even do a proper turn on a skateboard. Um, but you know, it's gonna be a steep learning curve. We'll be really good at it very soon. Um, I started a new TikTok. It's actually a postcard from Sarah too. I'm hoping to change it to postcards from Sarah, <laughs> but you know how TikTok has like the 30 day block and you can't change your name for 30 days? Did that yes. too many times. So yeah, I'll um, track my surf and skate 
experiences there. I'm just trying to figure out if you can learn how to surf and skate in your late 20s and kind of like change your lifestyle around because I feel like, I mean, at least I grew up with like this really common, I'm calling it a common misconception, that if you don't start a sport really early, there's just no way at getting good at it, getting good at it. And I guess like getting good at it is what does that mean like yes i'm probably not going to be a pro surfer or pro skater in this life and that's totally fine but i can still get like good enough to like have a really good time that's that's where i'm trying to go i think you absolutely can i just think it's based on how much effort that you put in like if you wanted to get good at anything you absolutely could if you dedicated a ton of your free time to it i also think that by even just starting you're way ahead of everyone else with anything like you might be a horrible painter but you're a lot better than people that never paint ever that's true Um, i would say the vast majority of the world has never skated (laughs) so you're already doing better than a lot of people would because it's not an intuitive thing we'll see how that goes we'll see if i can still make it um yeah i feel like i feel like that's that's the major updates um anything else you're thinking of or should we Should we get into our shark quiz? I mean, I recently started eating cucumbers. Kind of still on the fence about it. Wait, you didn't (laughs) eat cucumbers before? No, because I know you hate them, right? I hate cucumbers. Will not will not eat them. Yesterday, I had cucumbers in my bowl. Lost my shit over it. There's no way I could eat it. And I'm not a picky eater overall. I don't think. I started with the mini cucumbers and really liked the crunchy aspect and i bought another bag of mini cucumbers but they're actually big inside and i'm not loving the texture i could understand why people would hate them so we're just trying to incorporate new vegetables into our lives so if you have any suggestions let me know i'm I'm thinking beets next raw broccoli yeah raw broccoli is also now a part of my diet what are you thinking next beets oh oh no beets i really don't like red beet i like beets and i like radishes it's just not something that i eat normally Mm, do you know what i really want is one of those choppers one of those salad choppers it's sort of a tupperware Mm -hmm. container and there's a lever and a top that you put the fruit or the vegetable in it you put the top down and it chops it into cubes do you know what i'm talking about yeah yes i would like one of those because i think it would be It would make my cucumber, broccoli, radish journey a lot easier and more manageable than just having to chew them and bite them raw every day. Probably. Well, that should be easy to get. And that just shows you how exciting my life is at the minute. (laughs) (laughs) Well, lots of exciting things are happening, but... Oh my god, we might... We are gonna go sailing this weekend, and we're so stoked. We are. That's gonna be crazy. That's gonna be life-changing. It's going to inspire us forever, one way or another. Yeah, I'm scared I'm going to get seasick, but I don't think I'm going to get seasick in the Bay of San Diego, so I'll be fine. I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be so exciting. And we have a little ocean conservation fair, if you want to say so, going on on Saturday morning, which um, tune in live to our Instagram will take you with us on our Instagram stories. That's going to be exciting, too. Yes, 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 yes. You already know Um, we're going to be posting a little vlog about it. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, don't don't forget to follow us on our Instagram. There's a lot of extra content. Also, don't forget to follow me on Postcards, Postcard from Sarah 2 on TikTok. (laughs) Also, like, while we're here, if you are listening and you haven't left us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, go ahead and just do it. (laughs) It it really helps us. Yeah. Also, DM us and let us know who you are. Because honestly, yesterday someone DM'd us, shouts out, it was so cute. I really am like, I'm just so intrigued who's on the other side of this. So if you feel fancy free, just shoot us a message. Yeah, fancy free. I love it. Okay. We will start our little shark quiz because guess what? Our episode one, two, ranked one, two, I just checked one, two, four, six, and seven are shark slash killer whale episodes, which is really interesting. Um, you guys love it, so let's just throw something in. Let's. Just I think we need to do like more. an official intro. Welcome everybody 
to this part of the episode where Sarah has prepared shark trivia and I have no idea <laughs> what is going what to go is on. Gonna happen. <laughs> so also, just to give this a little preface, just to give you a heads up, these facts are coming from pages like Noah, the WWF, the American Ocean Foundation, I hope that's even a thing, the National Wildlife Federation. So if any of this is not true, then Take that's it up their fault. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I no, felt. There, there's no Wikipedia knowledge in this, but also obviously we're taking, we're taking things from the internet here right now. I just want to give it a little preface in case you're like, that's actually not i felt that way last week it's rough with all of these science things the thing with research is that people just get different numbers especially with something like the ocean it's so big and difficult to like measure on a global scale it was like you could google the same question and the five most reputable sources will have vastly different numbers because they use different qualifiers or whatever so i don't know i think that sometimes rather than the exact number it's like more important about the point that's trying to be made yeah okay so let's start this i'm just gonna go through and ask you some questions or questions of the week (laughs) questions of the week okay would you say sharks have good eyesight or bad eyesight Oh, starting with a softie, starting with a true softball because we've had our guests come on and, and say this they have horrible eyesight right no, that's what I thought. But overall, it says that sharks can actually see well in lighted areas. And they have kind of good night vision. Not all sharks, though. I think we learned that some sharks, like this part is just from our recent episodes. I think bull sharks have like really small eyes. Um, but they can see pretty good, apparently, according to Noah. Oh my god, I was too confident. Color me confused. Because I thought that they had horrible eyesight. And that's why that they can't tell what you are and they have to see what you are with their mouth. So Noah says, Most sharks have good eyesight. Most sharks can see well in dark lighted areas, have fantastic night vision, and can see colors. The back of sharks' eyeballs have a reflective layer of tissue called a tapetum. Tapetum? This helps sharks see extremely well with little light. Wow. But I agree with you because I also always think like, oh, sharks just do all these, like, not all these, sometimes have mistaken identity bites because they can't see that well. What is an organ that not only sharks, but that sharks are kind of famous for, like a, an extra sense that we don't have? what is an organ that they have that's like a extra sense they have yeah like what is the shark's extra sense that we don't have but they have Mm, echolocation (laughs) no No. that's whales (laughs) um i don't know i'll give you a little hint it's the small black spots on their nose super smell no they have wait i remember taylor saying this and i was like whoa that sounds crazy and i will never be able to say this it's called ampule of lorenzini well they have electroreceptor organs so they can sense electromagnetic fields and temperature shifts in the ocean that's also why the like people wear shark bands i'm not saying that they work but that's how the shark bands work they have like electromagnetic fields that are supposed to disturb the sharks but you know like how some people in the water wear these like like mosquito bands yeah yeah yeah, i've seen it um so what's the do you know what that is actually like why do they have that do we know that that's how they locate it's like electroreceptors that's they can like okay this is again knowledge from someone who did not study this if a fish swims it's gonna make like waves and they can detect the electromagnetic waves like they react that's why they react to movements because of the uh, because of those things 
did not know the that. The more you know. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we learned more about this in that we can reference some episodes. Check out Diving with Sharks with Taylor Cunningham. I think she I'm pretty sure that we talk about those and you can learn more from someone who's not making up stuff like me right now. <laughs> Next question. Oh, I actually well, I'll t- I'll tell the story after this. What does shark skin feel like? I like how these are now just open-ended questions where I can just say okay. anything in the world. I what feel is- like it feels like wet rubber. That's soft. Interesting. No, it feels like sandpaper. And if you <gasps> go one side it's kind of softer but the other side it's actually like really rough like sandpaper but actually what i was going to say i recently and i want to know everyone's thoughts on this so i went to the birch aquarium and the birch aquarium is like a really big aquarium in san diego and it's in collaboration with the university as far as i know well it's like a research center it i'm just saying it's not like any aquarium it's like doing conservation research all those kind of things But they have the tanks where you can touch sea animals, which I'm always like, is that chill? Like if there's just people coming and touching the animals? Um, Because I don't know, I don't know what my, what my thoughts are on this, but since it's like an educational space that's held by like a conservation and like research university aquarium, I'm like, they probably know, like they would know if that's horrible for the animals in the tanks, right? What are your thoughts? Uh, I haven't been to an aquarium in a very, very long time, so I haven't seen those in a while. And I know that there's a lot of different opinions on captivity in general. I don't think that they would let people touch an animal if it was super detrimental to that animal. But at the same time, I think people would argue that being in a tank and being perturbed by people all day would be detrimental to any animal because it's not natural. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Well, you could touch a small shark, and I touched a small shark, and it actually felt like sandpaper, and I was like, whoa, crazy, because I remember learning that fact, and I was like, whoa, I wonder if I'll ever touch a shark, and then I did, and I was like, crazy, this is actually, this is exactly true. Yeah, I would have never guessed that. That's really interesting. Um, I think it has to do with the aerodynamics of like the shark swimming there's there's something that the sandpaper skin has something to do with them swimming wait i should just read this and see these scales point towards the tail and help reduce uh, reduce friction from surrounding waters when the f- shark swims so it's like an aerodynamic thing okay um okay this one is also interesting i feel like there's a lot of instagram and tiktok videos about this popping up recently I don't know how to I don't know how to ask a question with this, but what happens have what happens when a shark lays on its back? <laughs> Why would a shark ever lay on its back if it wasn't like dying or injured? Is my question. I've yeah, never seen let's say like let's an say image of not, a shark laying on its back. What would happen if you would move a shark and lay it on its back? depend like oh no like matter if, if the i shark pushed a shark in it on its back rolled over <laughs> it rolled and I think over sometimes in the water that happens i think that sometimes happens in nature too i recently saw a tiktok where someone says that has something to do with like mating behavior but that is tiktok knowledge don't i have no idea this. where this is going you can just tell me <laughs> oh they go in a trance like state so when you flip a shark upside down they go into like a trance like state trance like state called tonic immobility scientists sometimes flip sharks when like they work on sharks but yeah there's also apparently they're sometimes just like randomly floating on their back and then it looks like they're dead but they're just like in trance and then when they flip back they're actually like back to normal there's like so many videos i'll just i'll send you a video as well we'll share a video in our story and they're just chilling they're just passed out can you imagine swimming around in the sea just jumping off a boat swimming around and you see a shark but it's flipped upside down not moving i would definitely think it's dead yeah probably but yeah but i feel like that's not even i remember watching this video and it was actually a tiger shark and these people on the boat were like it's dead it's dead and then it just flips and it's like swimming away and i was like whoa imagine that's you on that boat yeah so beware um 
what do you think how long have sharks been around this Ooh, is like I a feel fun that I should question. know this one because <laughs> I was watching that show this is life on Netflix which I recommend if you like dinosaur shows it's good it's slow at certain time periods because it covers every single era of earth and the era where there's just insects lasts like a super long time and I don't care about insects no offense to my bug people but I think my roommates watched this is it like like animated and it kind of looks real but then obviously it's like dinosaurs it's wild so they mix real clips with animations because some of the creatures that existed still seriously do. like 500 million years ago still exist so they mix clips of a prehistoric jellyfish with that still that still exists with uh like an edited animated version of like a weird underwater insect thing so you really feel as if it's real so it's it's super cool um but i don't even know if i made it to the part that has sharks so <laughs> i don't know okay wild guess a very very long time ago a hundred million years ago 455 million million mm -hmm. uh only 400 million off <laughs> What do you remember from that show? What else was around 455 million years ago? I mean, there was a lot of animals on there that surprised me that they still exist today, like um, in almost the same form. And a lot of them were deep sea creatures. I think alligators was one of them. Hmm. Really? That's wild. That's not, not really surprising, but I would also not have thought about it. But they do if look you think like about really it, ancient. They They're like have very dinosaur -y. Exactly. They're like in and out of water animals, which makes sense because the o the world used to be all ocean. So at yeah. some point when the land formed, like the animals had to like mutate, more fate, whatever, so that they could go on land, which Wait, that's really interesting to me. The whole earth used to be ocean. That's like wild. I seriously recommend this show. It's so fun. Take a little gummy <laughs> and just think about the prehistoric days of the earth. That's wild. Um... What colors are blue? What color is a blue shark? Yeah. <laughs> this is a trick question. Gray? <laughs> no, it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> but what's a trick question? Yeah, it says blue sharks are really blue. <laughs> I've never heard of the species blue shark, so... Oh, yeah, blue sharks... Wait, are blue sharks... Are blue sharks mako sharks, or do mako sharks and blue sharks just look really similar? I don't know. Don't quote me on this. They might be the same. They might just look similar. I think they look similar, and they're not the same. Um, what does your finger and a whale shark have in common? Ooh, it's unique, and the spots are not the same. Yes, each whale shark spot pattern is unique, just like our fingerprints, and that's how they ID them. Woo! I got one right, finally! Yes! Yeah, Speaking yeah, yeah. Speaking of whale sharks, I've seen a lot, <laughs> sorry to just go on a random tangent, I've seen a lot of stuff on Instagram and TikTok, and I'm super happy to see it. It's bringing awareness to whale shark tourism and how so much of it is really bad for the whale sharks. Have you seen any of this? No, maybe? It's basically just talking about how a lot of places that have whale sharks and have whale shark tours advertise themselves as like super good for the sharks, but actually they trap the sharks in these areas in like calm waters and then they feed them, which obviously disturbs the natural feeding hunting. patterns. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and they might not be feeding them exactly what they would eat in the wild, and then people go and see them, but there's hundreds and hundreds of people seeing them, so it's not actually like they're in wild, and it's like super bad for the animals. So basically, it was just bringing awareness to the idea that when you do any type of shark diving, whale diving, whatever, that you need to actually make sure that it's a very mm -hmm. legitimate company, which I think can be so difficult in some places that, at least for me, I think... If I couldn't 100% make sure, I think I would just skip it altogether. Yeah. But 
we have actually i'm sorry i'm just i just keep plugging these episodes we have an episode the life of a shark ecologist with cat sharks who actually speaks about this right yeah we talk yeah, about she does whale talk about shark it. yeah so and then again our episode with taylor we also speak about like how to find a good company for shark diving and um yeah so if you're interested in that check out those two episodes because yeah really important to make sure that you go with like a good company and for your safety and for the animal's safety yeah. if you're diving with like now you are frozen it's your picture looks so creepy and scary because i it's so pixelated that it looks like you're you have no face so all i can see is like this creepy ghost demon looking person i wanna rock with you all night we could ride the boogie into sunlight i honestly wish that like jurassic park was real because i love dinosaurs and oh it's just me now i love dinosaurs as a kid i went to this daycare i have always tried to rediscover what this show is nobody seems to remember it I don't know if it's a figment of my imagination or what it is, but there was this show with dinosaurs where it was animated, but it was for kids. It was on Discovery Channel or something like that. And it was amazing. And every uh, episode would follow like a new dinosaur. I loved that show. I think it helped me escape the fact that I was... If you're wondering why I'm talking to myself, it's because... Sarah mysteriously dropped off. I'm pretty sure her computer overheated, which is so annoying because she actually has a good computer and she has good Wi-Fi. It's just some things are completely unpredictable. Even if we both have like perfect Wi-Fi, perfect computers, whatever, there's always some random issue. Why did I get on the topic of dinosaurs? I think it was because Sarah was talking to me about how sharks are dinosaurs. The fact that they're 450 million years old is so crazy, crazy. I also think sometimes about how they must have evolved since then and how we're evolving all the time. And I know that there's someone out there that probably has studied the evolution of humans, but I do think about, are we evolving right now? Uh, I guess it's impossible to see because we've not been around for 100 million years. And that's how long it takes for something to evolve into a new species. I just made that number up, by the way. I just mean it takes a whole lot of years. So, I guess that's something for future human, future humans, future humans. The future humans can figure out if we've evolved or not as a species. Sort of like the gallbladder thing, like people aren't being born with gallbladders or wisdom teeth. That's sort of what I mean. If this hasn't proven to you that I'm a professional yapper, I don't know what will, because Sarah's still missing and I'm still here. What should we talk about next, guy? Business highlight. A major issue with a lot of the biggest sunscreen and body care brands is that they are formulating their products with harmful chemicals that are dangerous for human health, we're talking potential carcinogens, we're talking endocrine disrupting chemicals that are hurting human health, that hurt oceans and the marine life that live in them. We have discovered a brand that we're absolutely obsessed with that is working to combat this problem. Stream to Sea is one of the only brands that is EWG tested, which is a really strict testing for skincare products to make sure that it's reef safe, ocean safe, human safe, and they passed all of those things. So their products are 100% clean. We started using almost all their stuff and we are literally diehard fans and obsessed. It just feels so good to wear something that is totally safe for you and totally safe for the ocean. They have a wide range of sunscreen, which I love all of them, honestly, but my favorite one is the glitter one. It's so cool. Also love their leave-in conditioner, their body lotion. What's your favorite product? 
I really like to use their leave-in conditioner. It smells amazing, even though it's fragrance-free. And I also really like their body shampoo two-in-one. I used to be a non-believer in two-in-ones, but I actually really like the way this smells and the way it makes my body and hair feel. On the podcast, we talk a lot about supporting brands that are better for us and better for the environment, and stream to see really embodies that. It's a woman-owned brand. Everything is made in the United States. They're based in Florida, and they're always trying to make new products that are safe safe for us and safe for the environment. If you're convinced and you want to try stream to see make sure to use Ocean Stories at checkout to get 10% off and to support our show. Back to the episode. Okay. The last question I ask before All right. we hit little technical We're difficulties. Back, baby. I can't wait to hear a little 5 minute ramble that I didn't hear. My monologue if that monologue makes it into the episode, uh, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> um, well, we left off I sang on a little the question. Song. Oh, I can't wait. Wait, there's actually, we have to go to the Birch Aquarium because I'm just seeing here that it says not all sharks have the same teeth. And at the Birch Aquarium, you can actually touch the different shark teeth. It's not helpful, though. It's so sharp. I'm like, fuck, if that thing ever bites me, it's over. Um... Besides the point, maybe you'll see a little vlog of Lydia I mean the Birch Aquarium soon. Um, the last question that we left off on was, what are two, at least two different ways that sharks give birth? Oh, okay. One way is they have eggs, those corkscrew eggs that get stuck in rocks. Is that true? Yeah, the black corkscrew eggs. Yeah. Those are super cool. And you can find them in the tide pools if the shell of the egg, not like an alive egg. Yeah, and don't super touch them cool. if they're still intact. Yeah. The other way, I don't know, live birth. Okay, it's... They're... I'm like these Latin words, I'm just butchering them. It's oviparous, oviparous, and viviparous. Is that what it's called? Well... It's life bearing and egg laying and I think I think with great whites is that they have an egg but it hatches while it's still in the belly and then they give life birth. Whoa. Wild, right? Yeah, Wild that's facts. pretty crazy. This is I'm recalling this from a half drunk conversation I had with a friend who's a marine biologist at one of our parties, so don't quote me at this. But no, yeah, I'm I don't sure think I was true. there. How many shark species are there? It's like an over, over 500. Oh, <laughs> I was pretty close. <laughs> Super close. Okay, this one's crazy. I googled this and I even translated it from inches into centimeters. What is the smallest shark and the largest shark? Like how Ooh. tall is the smallest shark? I'm going to go like as small as a fish, like six inches, 10 inches. Yes. So I think the smallest shark is called the dwarf lantern shark. And it's 6.3 inches, which is 16 wow. centimeters. Okay. Yay. And then what is the largest one? Huge. The videos of whale sharks I was seeing, I was shook. They're so long. I don't know. 15, no, 20 feet long. Apparently... It's up to 55 feet, which is 16 meters. What shark is 55 feet long? I guess a whale shark. For real? That I is feel like so I'm, long. I was saying, I was wondering the same thing. I was like, that's kind of wild. It's 16 meters. But then if you think about like a blue whale is obviously the longest or tallest living animal on the planet but they can get up to 80 feet would they be like they can be tw and it makes sense that they would be almost as twice as large as a as a whale shark like whale sharks are really big yeah yeah that makes sense wow it's just hard for me to conceptualize obviously i've never seen one the largest accurately measured whale shark was 61 feet 18.8 .8 meters Wow. 
Wow, That's actually crazy. I really want to see a whale shark. They're so beautiful. I remember, this is like one of my sh- childhood memories that I'll never forget. The day I learned, when I was a kid, the day I learned how large a blue whale was, was, I don't know, it was way before I could conceptualize what that meant. But I think like the average is something like 24 meters or something. I'm, I'm making these numbers up. But it's exactly like the average blue blue whale size is exactly how long our backyard is and I remember I remember my dad like sitting outside with me and he's like the blue whale is exactly from this part of the of the backyard to this part so ever like every time I go home I look at our backyard and every time I'm like that's one blue whale like to this day I think about our backyard in like blue whales it's so crazy and it's so it's really precious I'm like this is so insane like it still doesn't make sense because I can see the distance but I'm like I can't conceptualize what a, an animal that big would look like i mean whales are just so cool i already thought they were cool but thinking about how large they are like think just... about think about how a 60 a 61 feet boat that's a massive boat and then that whale's just as long as the boat they are legitimate giants they're Holy so crap. big okay we're coming on to the last... same world as us yeah we're coming into our last little few questions this one is also fun because i wrote my 11th grade we had like a a thesis in 11th grade we had to write to like get ready for university and i wrote it on this topic so i had to bring it into this (laughs) which shark wait what's a special trick that only the bull shark can do no it's like an adaptation a bull shark adaptation. It has to do with where they can live or where, where they can exist. Bull sharks can get frozen into glaciers and survive. And then they can unfreeze millions of years later. No, but almost as crazy. <laughs> bull sharks can live in salt water and fresh water. Let me call it sweet water, please. And they can there's something with like how they can filter their water but i read that they can live in fresh water years at a time and that's why they're found in like the mississippi and the amazon rivers and there are sometimes like bull shark attacks in rivers because they can live in fresh water isn't that bizarre that is bizarre and that is wild and crazy no we don't want any ads we just want facts no ads, just facts. Okay. Welcome to the last question of our Shark Trivia 2024. This one is a statistical question to hopefully make you less scared of shark bites. It might make you more scared of car accidents, though. We love to compare. You can't be scared of sharks if you're scared if you drive your car every day. What do you think? How many car accidents were reported in 2023? A lot. I'm like, I'm like nervous that this number is not correct, but it says it's from the World Health Organization. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's in the top three causes of death in the world. Really? Yeah, heart disease. I'm pretty sure second for people under 30 is car accidents. Oh yeah, that sounds about right. It's 1.19 million. I mean, I'm just terrified of car accidents. Thinking that the whole, there's so many people in the world, like how many people must drive a car? That must be like several billions. I don't know. Every I'm time not good I get in the statistics. car, I picture a golden light surrounding me in my car. Oh, that's cute. Like a little yeah. bulb. Exactly. My protection sphere. <laughs> Your, isn't there like a Harry Potter thing? Oh no, wait, that's Twilight. Oh my god, I love Twilight so much. Can Bella make, like, protective shield? Why am I asking this? I've watched this movie 350 times. Bella can make protective shields? Yeah, that's the whole last movie. is about her making the protective sh- shield when the Volturi attack her family, and then she's learning how to protect all of them. Oh my gosh, I don't. I think I need to brush up on my Twilight. I don't remember that. I think you definitely need to rewatch this weekend. <laughs> this is Okay, maybe I will. Okay, so... 
we only asked about these car accidents to have a comparison. So compared to the 1.19 million registered car accidents, how many sharks attack have there been in 2020? 400. Whoa, that'd be a lot. That'd be scary. I mean, it wouldn't be scary. I mean, there's usually every summer there's like 50 on the East Coast. So I was just multiplying that for the world. There was six in New York and three in South Carolina and 20 in Florida. I guess that's all the East Coast. Well, it was 80. Yeah, in North Carolina, there's usually a few. There's 83 total. 15 were fatal. But one thing that's a little scary is, what do you think out of the 83, how many were in the U.S. Again, like those are only the record, like the ones that were like recorded. So there is probably more that are just not that we just don't know of. But this was a shocker for me. I mean, definitely a majority because I don't know. I feel like I'm always seeing in the headlines in North Carolina that there's like 20 shark encounters. Really? Yeah. I've never heard about this, but that's scary as hell. I'm not gonna go there. Okay. It's been 83 total and 41 were in the U.S., which that to me was wild news. I would not have expected that personally. Um, Florida being the hotspot. I would have expected that. I would have expected there to be 80 per year in Australia alone. No, in Australia had four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow. What um, website is this? It's called Tracking Sharks. Hmm. I mean, I know that shark attacks are very sensationalized, so it would make sense that I would perceive there to be more than there actually are. Yes. And yes, you are way more likely to die in a car accident than by a lot of other things. For sure. Sharks. And flying. Um, but this is, I feel like this was really like putting it into context. I'm shook that there are so many East Coast attacks and that you thought of that. Like, there's always, like, five or six in California, and I'm like, oh, that's scary. I mean, in Australia, I feel like it's once a month. In Australia? But, uh, clearly, I'm wrong, because I thought that there was so many more than there were. It was, like, 11, and there's only 12 months, so it's, like, pretty accurate. I guess, I mean, on a global scale, if there's once a month in different areas of Australia because it's a pretty big place. There's a lot of coastline there. Yeah. I feel and like this year they have the rest of like, the world. I feel like there was a lot going on this year. There's like some news that there's like one we can do an episode about this, but I think there was like one particular beach where there were a lot of attacks for some reason. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's also what makes it feel like there was more. Yeah, um it could be that. But yeah, we can all chill out we're safe nothing is going to happen to us unless we get really incredibly insanely unlucky and we happen to be it's actually insane like it's so funny how it's kind of it must be like the human ego like it's so funny that you actually think that you're going to be the one bitten in by a shark when you go into the water like you actually think of it as like a a rational fear but then on the other hand there's probably 80 people in the world that win 500 million dollars in the lottery every year and you would never it, it would never cross your mind that you could be lucky enough to be that person it's like so funny how we perceive those things it's so true and from an alternate perspective why are people not more afraid of driving like i just feel like as somebody with anxiety people love to hate on me <laughs> when I'm scared in different situations and it's like yeah I'm scared because people die doing this all the time we want to be afraid of random things and then not consider the more pressing things like driving safely and I think honestly that's important to talk about because if people would just drive safer and be more cognizant of the risk they take in the car then I think we would genuinely have safer roads I think the reason it's like so unsafe is because it's something you do every single day so you totally zone out and forget it just becomes so mundane and you just get used to driving like a wild man that's true yeah it's also like the u.s driving is definitely 
it's a wild wild place like coming from a from a place where there's not speed limits it still feels more coordinated i feel like we're just have a lot more training and then here people are just doing whatever well moral of the story is <laughs> when you get in the ocean you don't really have to worry about sharks you should be more worried about drowning <laughs> <laughs> no don't worry like don't stress and have an anxiety attack but it's true you're way more likely to drown so work on your swimming skills and leave the sharks alone <laughs> and drive safe I'm just going on a rant now, but it's true. People are terrified of sharks and know, have never heard of a rip current and have no idea how to escape one. But a rip current That's true. is way, way, way more likely to impact you or happen to you, something that you might experience, than a shark attack. Be aware of rip currents. If you don't know what to do in, if you are trapped in a rip current, make sure that you check that out before you enter the ocean the next time. There's rip currents everywhere. There are tons of recurrence where we are. So just be super aware of that. I feel like especially landlocked people are sometimes not super aware of recurrence and currents in general. It's no joke. And it's kind of going back to what you said earlier about, I don't know if it's the ego or just good marketing in society. Like, why is it that the idea of a shark is enough to genuinely keep people up at night with horrible nightmares and so scary when like the more mundane things like a rip current, like it's less it's just psychologically less scary like you might unless you're in the ocean world you probably won't have like, nightmares about rip currents do you know yeah, what i mean I, I think it's something about like our like apex predators attacking you it's just i feel Ooh. like it's not it's not only sharks like if you i mean i don't know if everyone has the same thing but if you are walking on a safari in Africa, you probably are very aware of all the other animals. I feel like sharks are just one of a few of them. When I was hiking in True. Thailand and there was literally like 50 tigers left, I was just so hyper aware of the tigers and it was, there's no way you could ever possibly encounter one. So I feel like it, it's just like this. It's probably honestly our oldest fear. Like yeah. that was the first thing that humans ever feared probably. You're so, so like being hunted. Yeah. And I feel like sharks are especially scary because they come out of nowhere. We can't see them. I feel like it's almost, it's kind of combining like the fear of the dark, just a different version of it because you can't see with like apex predator fear, like most deepest fears of humans from the last hundreds of thousands of years combined yeah. in a shark. <laughs> I have been really wanting to get a psychologist onto the podcast to talk about fear and just the mental situation behind fear and how to overcome it because there's a lot of fears for example fear of sharks that are from i don't know our evolution for whatever reason we have these fears and then they don't serve us and they hinder yeah. us because they're from our survival instincts from so long ago so it's actually safe to let go of those fears but it's a struggle for our mind so if you know any psychologists that specialize in phobias, please let me know. I'm going to find one. I'm going to just start doing research and try to find somebody to come on and explain that to us. Yeah, I, th I think it's the same with like your fight or flight. Like fight or flight is, is so good if you actually have to run away from something. But now our modern world just puts us into a constant fight or flight. That just makes us super sick. And we just need to realize that you should not be in fight or flight stress unless a freaking tiger is hunting you which doesn't happen that often unless you're Lydia yeah. and a black little tiger is hunting you um oh my god I was so confused what you were saying and then it all came to me that was a that was a throwback was a to reference. the dog bite if you yeah. want to know what happened with that listen to our past episodes um yeah. okay I feel like this is time to wrap it up if you know of a psychologist that specializes in anxiety and overcoming fears well more overcoming fears i feel like anxiety and overcoming fears might be two different things let us know that'd be so interesting and cool yeah and yeah i'd also love to know i know that um, a lot of people nowadays work with exposure therapy but what how would you do that if you're scared of sharks like that would be an interesting exposure therapy in the wild maybe 3d animation if i had like a 3d animation of a great white shark swimming to me i would literally probably die of a heart attack still to this day even though i feel like i got a lot better 
I honestly think I'm way more scared now of stingrays than sharks. So oh, easy. throw me in the water with those sharks. Perfect. Let's go. Let's go cage diving. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for another episode of Ocean Stories. If you'd like to follow along on Instagram, you can find us at Ocean Stories underscore podcast for updates and behind the scenes. We'll also be sharing our ocean adventures on YouTube at Ocean Stories Podcast. If you like this episode, please show your support by leaving a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Join us next Tuesday for more Ocean Stories.